Hi, Chris. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can. I think this could work. I'm trying headphones too. So hopefully there's hopefully there's no technical difficulties and we get this all underway. Cool. <laughs> and uh, so how's the sound? It's pretty good. I'm going to lower my volume a little bit and hopefully I see that there's seven people out there. And if you can hear us okay out there and you can, if you can give us, if you can, or if you're able to out there on the interwebs and you can give us high tens and tell us that the sound is okay or send us a message that the sound is okay for you out there. That would be really helpful <laughs> as we get yes. started here today. Definitely so, on my side. Since I'm trying this new microphone, so hopefully it will work. Yeah, and I'm I'm also just using my my laptop mic, so hopefully that's enough. Would you say that my range is on the low side or the high side, or what do you think? To my ears, they're sounding in the middle. To be honest, I okay. I, I think it sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll wind up pulling the audio and using it for podcast or what, but um, it's it's all a work in progress, trying to experiment and see what works best. But exactly. Yeah, so, <laughs> so how are you doing tonight, Chris? Doing pretty good. Did you uh, survive the blizzard on the Northeast? Yeah, the uh, snow apocalypse. Yeah, I think we're out of the, <laughs> the worst of it, I'm sure. There's still piles of snow around, but um, it, we're pretty much back to normal, except the roads are fine and everything. But there's, yeah, heaps of snow everywhere. And things are pretty much yeah. back to normal for you guys. Uh, there's heaps of snow all over. No, the... Uh... Uh, county where we are, there's still a lot of plowing that has to be done. The schools are still closed. Oh, wow. So, yeah, there, there's still a lot of work that has to be done. Mm -hmm. But people are getting around, so we do what we can. So maybe for people who are tuning in, and, and we should tweet out a little bit that we're on air now, too. And if, if anybody wants to pop in and talk about a specific U-turn you've taken, we're meaning today to talk about how and when to do a U-turn in your life. And by way of introduction, my name is Lisa DeLay and I have Spark My Muse, a podcast on twice weekly. And we do these live broadcasts about twice a month. And I do a third broadcast usually on the second Saturday of the month called Sin Create, where we discuss a monthly topic. And this is a little bit of my way to kind of kick off what will be next week's, the start of February next week is kind of uh, rethinking and reimagining and maybe even reclaiming repentance, which is kind of one of these um, typically religious terms, but uh, repentance is really just turning around U-turn or about face or it's a navigational word too. And we tend to think of it as like related to sin, but it can be related to pretty much anything. And so I wanted to think about it in today anyway, in terms of how can we make U-turns in life, whether it's relationships or a job or career path or just, you know, doing something differently. And also just kind of think about that, asking you, Chris, how you've seen that in your life and how that's happened for you and how people can navigate that portion of their life if they're thinking, is this, is this a time to make you turn? Is, should I do that now? Or when, should, how do I know? And, and I think it, for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different, but it's also good to not wait forever when a U-turn is needed too. So maybe you can introduce yourself too. Right. And uh, I, I agree. And, and those will be some of the topics we'll, you know, hopefully be touching upon, especially, you know, how waiting way too long to, make the U-turn that we know needs to be done. Um, but uh, in a way of introduction, my name is Chris Shea, and I'm a uh, counselor and a blogger, and I also have a podcast called On Finding Peace, and uh, you can find that on uh, iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud and all those uh, places. Uh, so that's a little bit about me and uh, as Lisa mentioned, you know, we do this uh, every other week or so and really enjoy uh, doing that and really encourage people to chime in, you know, so that it doesn't just become, uh, you know, Lisa and I, and although we have great conversation in doing that, but, uh, you know, maybe we can, you know, learn from other people. And, and that's one of the things that I, I love about 
uh, Blab is, you know, how do we interact with others and learn from others? And because uh, I definitely don't have all the answers. So learning from others would be wonderful. So I just encourage everyone to do that. Yeah. And it would be helpful too if, if everybody else out there tweets it out. And I don't know if, if even everybody has the capability to do that too, but it's nice to get more people in. And I think it just does seem like as we get closer to nine o'clock, people start to come in. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. And are you gonna put repost this on your on your podcast too? I, I'm gonna try to repost it on my on my website for, as a replay. Yeah, that's uh my goal. And uh you know let's see what happens probably another couple days and uh get it up on the podcast and on my uh, YouTube feed and, you know, see how it turns out. Yeah. That's kind of a nice way to, to reuse the material if anybody missed it and stuff like that. Not everybody is free on a Thursday. I guess the, I guess the, de some debates are on tonight, but I don't know what time or anything. And uh, uh, <laughs> maybe actually, people are now. otherwise <laughs> occupied. It's now. So we're competing yeah. with that. Oh. We're, we're competing <laughs> with that. Although, you know, we can be like Trump because he did decide to walk away from that debate and do his own thing. That's right. We walked That's away right. and we're doing our own thing. That's right. We, we don't need to, we don't need to kowtow to that kind of pressure. So. <laughs> of course not. Do our own thing. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm curious as to what do you think was one of the biggest U-turns you've ever taken in your life? Which is kind of the, if you look back and you think one of the biggest times that you've, you think of something as this, this was probably one of the big U-turns for me. What, what do you think that would be for you? Right. <laughs> um, well, I, I know when I look back in life, there, there have been a good number of U-turns. Uh, but I would say the biggest U-turn uh, would be when I left the seminary and uh, moved out on my own. And um, for me, that that was big because um, for me, I had uh, entered the Catholic seminary and was going to become a priest. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent, I guess, close to 10 years as a Franciscan. Uh, wonderful time, no regrets, loved it. Uh, but I went right from high school, graduated high school, a couple months later, was right in the seminary. Uh, about 10 years later, give or take, you know, I'm uh, questioning walking away from that. So that was mm -hmm. actually big because for me, that was a total life shift. Yeah. And it was also a shift in that I'd never been on my own before. Mm. So, you know, you look at all those uh, years I'm spending with my parents and my brother, and then I move out of the house. Uh, granted, it was the uh, eight hour drive away, but I move into a community, a religious community. So, yeah. you know, in that community, they, you had the camaraderie and they, uh, you know, we all pitched in to take care of each other and, you know, it was a family, you know, so come now in my mid to later twenties, uh, you know, I'm sitting, uh, in a one room apartment and, uh, tiny, tiny apartment, um, for the very first time by myself on my own. Mm. And, uh, that was a shock. You know, right. you, you really don't know what that's like, I guess, until you do it. And, you know, I, I spent, you know, what, maybe 26, 27 years of my life, uh, you know, with other people. And right. uh, now it's uh, all by myself, just looking around my tiny, tiny apartments and uh, <laughs> tell you yeah. Now what. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, it was, a, it was different from anything else you'd experienced and right you had decided that was going to be the big difference for you yeah you know and uh you know i think you know in something like that you know when you look at entering you know a seminary and, and that kind of lifestyle that really is taken as a calling and mm -hmm. you know to try to discern you know do i make this u-turn in my life do i walk away from this because for me, it's not just walking away from a job or changing location. You know, this was changing something that I felt would be a calling and, you know, walking away from something that, you know, I'd always believe, you know, would be God's ordaining. And, uh, you know, so doing that was not an easy task, but, 
one that I know had to be done. And uh, as I said, no regrets for my time in, no regrets for walking away. And, mm-hmm. you know, life, you know, kind of continues. And, you know, that that's part of my whole philosophy. We learn uh, from our past. We incorporate all of that into what we're doing now. And, you know, I know without all of those experiences, I would be a totally different person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was one of those things that some people can change where, you know, their apartment or can change their job or can change um, their marital status. But you changed every, you know, your relationships changed, your location changed. <laughs> that that one change shifted pretty much every single other aspect then of your life because that was a whole mm-hmm. lifestyle change too. So that's kind of one right. of those radical shifts. Um, it's yeah. like when people come off of the mission field uh, from serving overseas, then that's the same kind of thing too. It's like a whole you know, cultural shift and everything else. So what made you decide, okay, now is time for this U-turn and what, what were the things that happened internally or even externally that got you to say, this season is over and a new season is starting. It's really hard to pinpoint, you know, one would be that exact moment. For me, I believe it was over the course of a couple of years of this kind of being drawn to something uh, other than what I was doing that, I think there was just the basic human nature of, you know, well, I've never been on my own, but -hmm. I think on that deeper sense, it was more of this, you know, feeling that as I began to understand it, that, you know, I think I'm still following God's calling by walking away. And Mm -hmm. that is very possible that it was his calling for me to have that experience to begin with, to prepare me for something else. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. took a lot of that discernment and, um, you know, talking with spiritual directors and, you know, uh, my fellow seminarians and all that, uh, you know, how do you know what the right thing is? And I think for me, part of that understanding was by working through an experience. You know, I, I'm somewhat in my intellectual pursuits, I'm quite abstract, but in, in daily living, I'm, I'm very concrete. So, you know, I think when somebody would say, well, can you visualize yourself, you know, living a married life and outside of, you know, seminary, can you visualize that? What is that like? Does that seem good? You know, I would sit there and go, I have no idea what that's like. I have no life experience to draw from mm. to figure that out. Um, so, You know, I think part of it, too, was, you know, for me to be able to understand where am I supposed to be, I needed that other experience to be able to judge, Hmm. uh, you know, between the two and to really find out in lived experience where might God be calling me to. Hmm. And it had to be lived for me. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's as I slowly came to those realizations, you know, that this is something I just really need to try. Um, and uh, finally came to, you know, that conclusion and then I had to convince the powers to be that I was right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause the, you didn't have context to really put that together. Otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. And you, did you feel like you were missing out on, on another life? I didn't really look at it as missing out on another life. Mm -hmm. For me, it it always was trying to discern what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? What what is it that God would want me to do? Mm -hmm. So I didn't really look at making that huge decision in a negative term, such as, you know, am I missing on that end? Or, you know, if I walk away, am I missing on this end? Right. Looking at it more in the sense of, you know, I know what I have now. Mm. Am I being drawn to something different? Mm. So right. Right. that I, I think trying to keep that positive bent, you know, helped. Mm. Um, 
the other nice part about it is, you know, during that process, I was given time to walk away of uh, taking a temporary leave of absence, oh. which was nice so that, you know, I didn't have to fully walk away immediately and turn away from that life mm -hmm. where I could walk away for a while, live on my own, have my job, you know, be in, in that apartment. But yet I was still bonded to them. And in that sense of, you know, now that I have this experience, what if I do realize, hey, I'm making a mistake. I got to go back. Mm. Uh, that option was there until I finally came to, you know, signing the papers and said, I'm not coming back. Okay. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I know everybody's different, but uh, I think for me, what, what really helped was trying to stay focused, trying mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, look at the positive ends. And in a certain sense, you know, how do you keep options open? Mm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before I closed that one door, I was able to experience and explore before actually closing a door. Yeah, that's the thing about making U-turns without being foolish. You know, it's right. easy to, it's easy to, to say, you know, and it's interesting how you approached it because I think the U-turns in my life have been maybe more like negative paced ones, like, oh, this is the wrong road for me. I have to stop going in this direction mm -hmm. and I have to turn around because this doesn't feel right anymore. I I just feel like, you know, thinking about um, career path or job or something like that. Those are a bit more major ones for me. like. I thought that this was going to be a good idea to take this job or to, you know, like that kind of thing or right. to work on this project or in this, you know, maybe a, this ministry project or something like that, but it isn't working out. It isn't what I thought it was going to be. And so I'm going to do a 180. but it wasn't actually like, it wasn't like in a positive sense, it was kind of like, Oh, this doesn't feel right anymore at all. And so I think that that's kind of been more my experience of U-turns where it just, it's a gut, it's a gut level thing. And, um, you know, I was asking around a little bit about U-turns for different people. I don't know if you know who Derek Sivers is, but he, um, he's been on a, he's on a bunch of Ted talks. He's, some of his Ted talks have been seen. It's, it's like way, way over 5 million, five or 6 million times. And um, so I asked him, he answers his email. He's really, he's really funny like that. He gives his email out. <laughs> you could just ask him a question and I'll answer it. And so he sent me, I said, you know, how, what has been one of the bigger U-turns you've done and how do you know when to make them? And I thought, I said, would you like to come on Blab? Now I knew he would say no because he says no to everything. So I wasn't totally expecting it, but he pointed me in this direction and said, you can read this. I wrote about this. So um, he's lived in a lot of different places around the world, in Singapore for a while. He's in New Zealand now. He lives different places every couple of years around the world. And he says that the big thing that he does is he asks, why am I here? And for different times in his life, he'll want to be really extroverted and meet a lot of people. And then he'll want to be very introverted and code and program and do things like that. And so he'll, after a while, he'll feel like it's not right anymore. He'll, why am I here? Okay. Did, did I satisfy that itch that I was hoping for? And is it time to move? Because for him moving around the world and living in a lot of different places, those are really, it's really high on his priority list. And so it was kind of interesting, you know, that, that just, you know, why am I here? Because location is one of those things you can really change in the kind of, in the kind of environment in the modern technical environment we live in. There's a lot of people who can leave, leave the environment that you're in. Right. If that's a, if that's a high priority for you. And, right. um, and I thought that was interesting. I, I don't know that I have a huge value to live all over the world like he does, but, um, for him, that was his answer. And and another thing I heard was, if you ask why five times, that you get down to the base of any real reason why you do anything. And that was another one of those kind of tidbits that, or nuggets, I guess you could say that it's kind of, mm -hmm. I, I'll have to I'll have to chew on that one for a while and and um, and try it more myself, grab onto it and and try it more myself. But that by the time you get to the fifth why, it, it's one of the core 
core reasons why you're doing anything. And it really gets down okay. to, you know, your base level reason for why you need to make a U-turn. Is it what's really driving your your core actions and stuff? So yeah. I would have to say that my yeah. my reasons tend to be <laughs> I guess they I guess my reasons tend to be more negatively driven than um, you know, possibility driven like your yours your example was. Mm -hmm. so. oh, although I, I think there was still the positive aspect because you were moving towards something mm -hmm. that you felt would be positive. That's something that you felt that you can use your gifts and, and make a difference. Yeah. So yeah, the negative may be you know in the leaving, but mm -hmm. I, I think there's some of the positive and the <laughs> I was trying to look on positive. <laughs> yeah, we'll reframe that. <laughs> I try. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I I really like you know uh, the that question that he was saying, and then I'm gonna have to think about the whys as well. But mm -hmm. you know that that other question, you know that I, I think you can ask that even if we're not talking location mm -hmm. uh, necessarily, but maybe you know what is my you know state in life, you know, and and you know why am I here? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know what what's my uh, you know, like mission or goal, and however, you know, somebody wants to phrase that. And, uh, you know, I, I do believe that for most people that if we're reflective enough on ourselves, we can probably find a, a base goal or mission that we have in life. Yeah. And we may move around or jump to different jobs or different projects, but... Yeah. I would think that if we're following our, our base core and whether that's a calling from God or our gut or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. that if we look back on everything we've done, is, is there an underlying theme? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I really believe if we can find that underlying theme, then, then I think whether we're moving around or not, we're still doing what we're meant to do. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. That, and that kind of goes back to vocation stuff that we had been, we've kind of right. come back to in, in January a few times, I think, um, knowing your why. And that that's so mm -hmm. important when you're U-turning is that knowing your why. So I th think whether it's in a, a relationship that you're in or the friendship or a romantic relationship, or you're in just, you know, you're in a town, but you want to be in a rural area or you're in a rural area, you want to be in a city really bad but knowing your why. And I think, you know, it seems like, you know, a lot of people want to move into, you know, an urban environment, but do they, but do they really? Because it's like, oh, I want to be in the middle of all this, you know, hubbub of activity. But, you know, I, a lot of people think that they do, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but they don't, but, you know, maybe trying it out would be a good idea because once you're there, then you have a lot of noise and you have a lot of traffic to deal with and you have a lot of, people to deal with and public transportation mm -hmm. and can be, you know, there's pluses and minuses. And so I think is knowing your why is that, why would you want to do that so that you won't feel left out or so that you wouldn't um, miss anything, fe fear of missing out on something. And is that actually a different core need that you actually wish you belonged? And so then could that be right. found in some other way that's actually closer to home? You know, that that maybe mm -hmm. the city isn't what you're looking for. Maybe you're actually looking for some closer friendships that you could actually right. find nearby. So I think that knowing your why is kind of that deeper core mm -hmm. need that a lot of times we just look, you know, in the wrong spots. And, and really, we don't even need a U-turn sometimes. We might right. just need to look more carefully you know, that it's not actually time for a U-turn. It's time to, to just look more carefully at what we really need. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, so yeah. that sometimes there are need there, there is a need for a U-turn, but sometimes mm -hmm. we think there's, and then we think we have to have a U-turn and we really don't. Um, but, right. Okay. No, and, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, that, that's why I've, counseled people that, you know, if you're feeling really stressed, say in your current job or your situation, don't make a change while under that stress hmm. for the very reason what you're saying, you know, it, it's that why. And, and, you know, usually it, it comes down to why do I want to make that change? Well, I want to get rid of my stress. 
mm. where when you really look at it, you know, most of our stress comes internally. I mean, it may be influenced by the external, but yeah. how we're coping with it is what's causing that stress. And, yeah. you know, for a lot of people, if that's why you want to say jump to another job or location or whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to find very quickly that you are still stressed. <laughs> you know, because you're still taking you with you. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. So wherever you go, you're going with you. <laughs> Right. You know, so I, you know, I think if, if you deal with, you know, some of the stressors and anxieties and, and whatever it is that seems to be that disconnect of why do I have to make that U-turn? And as you're saying to ask that why, mm. in a calmer sense, do we come, you know, with that realization that, yeah, you know, I really do need to change. Or as you said, maybe I just need to act different in my current situation and I'm going to receive what... I've been lacking, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, so, yeah. you know, and, and I think that's one of the great things in, in my major shift uh, that way from seminary to out is it did go over the course of, of a few years. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. you know, one of those, you know, like uh, I'm upset at this or, you know, this is getting on my nerves or whatever it is. So I've, I've just got to get out, <laughs> you know, um, and I knew some of the guys who did it that way. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you wonder if down the road do they have regrets, mm. you know, for doing it in, in the way that they did. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I haven't talked with them, but yeah. you know, I've, I've often wondered that, you know, you, you leave in, in something uh, that stressful. Does that help or yeah. if it's in a panic or something? Yeah. And, and another one is, you know, I don't know if, if how familiar anybody is with the, with the term on we, you know, it's like this, this board of this boredom of life it, it, and mm-hmm. it'll set in. Right. So, so on we sets in and <laughs> it, it's a tough one to explain, but I've had this feeling too. So you're, you're going through life and it gets sort of mundane. And what you really want to have is, um, is some excitement, right? And so mm-hmm. you're hoping to be sort of distracted or excited. And I guess maybe people don't have as much on we if they're not <laughs> bored. And now that we're distracted all the time, maybe we never get to that <laughs> on we anymore. I don't know. But um, but if you get to that point, the first thing you might think is, I'd like to change everything right now, too. And instead of kind of pushing past that to find something deeper, you know, that's another temptation of like, time for a u-turn because of all this on we and Mm -hmm. um you know it's it's really interesting because people say that it's it's the boredom you know the the curiosity is the cure for boredom and there's no cure for curiosity or something like that um and it's kind of like um sometimes we are just sort of afraid of the natural lulls that happen in regular life too. And, mm-hmm. and I, I'm kind of one of those people too, that needs kind of like, I need stimulation. I like change. I like variety. I I'm interested in new things. And right. when things get a little bit, uh, you know, when things get a little bit sedentary, I'm like, wow. mm-hmm. <laughs> how about something <laughs> interesting, you know? Um, and so I, I, I know I have in the past too thought, well, this is time for a U-turn, you know? And, and I think that's been, that's like a false positive. That's like a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a red herring. And so you're, you're thinking, you know, probably maybe knowing when to not U-turn is maybe the smarter, wiser thing that I've, I've gained, but um Maybe this is the, maybe I should have said how when to not take U turns should have been the title of this <laughs> should have been the title of this blab. <laughs> but um, I think there are there are definitely times when you have to when things are becoming unhealthy for you and and um, when there's a lot of like needless pain involved and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. And when when do you think are qualities and characteristics that that people should kind of do you think people should be aware of when when they should take into consideration making new turn type of at least getting into the frame of mind when they maybe should start considering something like that. Do you think? Well, and, and it is different for everyone. Uh, and, and I think the caveat would need to be at least from my end that, you know, if you're in a situation where you're actually being harmed 
then there's no question. You know, you, you've got a U-turn and get out, whether you're under stress or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that that's kind of, for me, the, the caveat of it all. But barring being, you know, injured in, in any way that, um, yeah, I think the, as you're saying, like kind of those red herrings, you know, one of these times when, we, when you know, don't make that U-turn, uh, you, you know, would be, you know, things such as the stress and the anxiety or boredom, uh, you know, if you find yourself being reflective and, and in reflecting, notice that you're jumping from thing to thing, you know, rather mm-hmm. quickly, you know, it, it might be a time to consider why do you want to jump again uh, into mm-hmm. something else? And 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 that's why I, I do like, you know, coming back to, you know, with the why question that, that I think if we really need to, uh, you know, kind of sit back with something that whenever you get this itch, you know, that, that, well, I need this new job or I need this new location or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, yeah. Can you step back for a moment and ask, why do I need that? What, what's, mm-hmm. what's either lacking in me? What do what do I think I'm going to gain in something else? Yeah. Um, I don't want to be cliche and say pros and cons list, you know, because mm-hmm. everybody does pros and cons list of everything, but <laughs> But yeah, I think at, at any moment that we want to jump to something else that we really need to step back and ask that question of why, you know, and is it selfish? Is it not selfish? Is it going to benefit me? Um, and, and also, you know, I think, you know, as I was mentioning earlier, if we look at what is our, our core calling or our core kind of being, does this next jump fit in with that theme of, you know, everything else that I've done? Am I still fitting that theme if I jump into whatever the next thing may be, you know, and not to say you don't make drastic changes, but I think depending on the severity of the change you want to make, you might want to take longer in the thought process, Uh, you know, because like I say, jumping in anything because of stress is probably going to keep the stress going. And, uh, Plus, you know, stress reactions are no different than any other fear type reactions. And, you know, people under stress are either going to do the fight or flight. You know, so I think in making those U-turns, are you just fleeing? Mm. Uh, You know, which, I mean, I guess helped if you're being chased by, you know, a dinosaur or something. But, you know, (laughs) in today's day and age, if you're stressed at your job, you know, we'll figure something out. But do you have to flee it because you're stressed from it? You know, that is such an excellent point. And that reminds me that there are a lot, there is a personality type. And there are some of us who are used to running away. And Mm -hmm. some of us will run, are used to that's a that's a typical response some of us are used to fighting and and confronting and some of us are used to running and i um have a very dear friend (laughs) i'm a i'm a fighter (laughs) i didn't realize it until i met a flighter (laughs) and um in my family it was a it was a conflict it was a yelling family growing up now i married i married Mm -hmm. a, a um clam up and we're very quiet and we send silent torpedoes at each other kind of, you know, from that kind of family. And, um, but, but a really dear friend of mine was a runner and I did not realize this. And so I would be talking to her and I wouldn't even think it was a conflict at all. I would just say, it would just get a little bit, I, I didn't understand what happened here. And, you know, I'd be talking about it and it would get a little bit more, I don't know, passionate or a little bit more, mm-hmm emotionally elevated and she would actually leave the room <laughs> i was like where did you wh- where are you did you just leave the room or what did you go to the bathroom or like where are you and she'd be like she wouldn't even realize what she's doing she actually would actually leave and and i was like you, you you left you left in the middle of our talk and it was mm-hmm. like i think she had no concept but that that's actually how every it always worked in her family and <clears throat> And we had to kind of have like rules and boundaries for like, we care about, I care about you. I'm not going to try to hurt you. But if you, if you're going to leave, that's Mm -hmm. kind of like breaking a rule. Like I'm going to try to be nice and you're going to try to not leave. But it's true. Like what looks like a U-turn 
could be running away. Mm -hmm. And then you, the challenge is to make it work, to stay and to see if there's a, an invitation there for, for growth. Right. And that that's a really tough one. I'm wondering if, if you're used to running, you would just have to really look for those patterns and see if maybe you could get some guidance through it or something, you know? And, and, you know, and, and I, I know I've been saying it over and over, but it's that, you know, how can you sit and self-reflect? Hmm. And I know that's tough for people, you know, and maybe not the sitting part. I mean, take a walk and self-reflect or take a car ride and self-reflect, you know, whatever you need to do. But, yeah. you know, to really be aware of that, am I fleeing or is this something that is actually good for me? You know, so maybe you do need to leave that stressful job, but don't do it under that pretense of I'm going to run away from it. Come to that you know, realization that no, when I look at say a pros and cons list and I look at the whys and, and I look at how my life is, yeah, maybe I come to that conclusion. No, I, I need to walk away. But for me, that's not fleeing. That's just understanding who I am, what the situation is, uh, you know, what's healthy for me, not healthy for me uh, versus, you know, what is my first impulse? Is my first mm -hmm. impulse to crawl, you know, to curl up and, you know, or is that impulse, you know, I, I got to run out of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter how good it sounds, you know, because uh, everything I think that's different is always going to sound better until you're actually there, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then you've got those challenges and, and you know, uh, you, you got to deal with all of that. So, um, you know, I, I know I, I had a job. Uh, not too, too long ago. And uh, I, I've always had the dream ever since a kid, you know, of, of driving uh, 18 wheelers and just going around yeah. the country. It's just one of those crazy dreams. But uh, I was seriously considering, <laughs> uh, you know, when I had the really stress going on, it wasn't the job, it was the people and uh, uh, the situations, which a lot was out of my control. And I was actually reading books and manuals on how to get into the business, how to, you know, drive the trucks yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, never did it, you know, was able to keep focus, but uh, no, I, I went so far as to do that. And, and I, I'm somewhat conversive on trucking. <laughs> 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 never but done you, it. But <laughs> You think that that was because you, you were considering like an escape patch or do you think, it was like something you were considering as like a healthy U-turn or do you think it was like, I got to get out of here? Yeah, the, that was the impulse. I got to get out of here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, now I, I think it, if I would have found a way to make it a healthy one and, and the family would have joined along and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it would have taken much to uh, convince me to do it. But no, really, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I knew this is running, but for the time where I needed to process what was going on, I think that diversion of doing the research on, you know, the trucking was enough to keep me in that stable place. That mm -hmm. even though I knew, you know, I'm not going to be going out there and doing that, but I, I had this diversion for a while and to kind of live off of that while I was figuring out what is the best approach. And, yeah. you know, what is the healthy way to do this? And, yeah. you know, do I need to change jobs? Do I stay in fights? And what does that mean? And uh, so, you know, in the end, I didn't get the truck and uh, <laughs> stayed a little bit longer in that job, but eventually moved on. And um, so, you know, that's why I think in, in my life experience, it, it's typically been, uh, you know, sit and evaluate for a while, uh, yeah. you know, before jumping into something. Yeah, and I, but I I'm think, not a big jumper anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, the the other thing too, if we decide to make a U turn, that's going to affect other people. Right. We we have to if we have family members or, or friends or even coworkers or something like that. That just doing it really suddenly, we have to empathize and and put ourselves in the their position too, because it can feel like a betrayal. It can feel like that we're abandoning them. We have to take in, in a way, take their feelings into consideration, even though that's a move we're making for our own interest and in our, you know, our own well being. Mm -hmm. but that, you know, there are other people that we affect in our lives and that 
in a way we right. need to help them and prepare them for, okay, I might need to make this really important U-turn and mm -hmm. here's how it's going to go down and I need your support with it. And, you know, and not to just suddenly be like, guess what? I'm selling everything and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm yeah. living on the side of my truck. And, uh, yeah, and that and that you a big U turn might be just the thing you need to do, but that you know there's there's kind of there's going to be a lot of collateral damage potentially, and 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 there's other people involved, you know, and so right. it's kind of like I've seen people make these really drastic U turns that they did need to do, but then how they did it blew everything up in their lives, right. you know. Um, and and I think that people know, and then that will that will stop people sometimes from from going through with it because they're thinking everything's going to blow up. And it's like, well, <clears throat> if you if you plan out some action steps and if you don't chicken out and you go through with it, it's probably not going to be as horrible as you think. You could have some right. contingency plans. You you could you could probably downsize your stuff. You could probably. You know, it, it, I think that, and the fear will stop people where they'll they'll anticipate that things are going to be way, way, way worse than they actually are. You know, that they probably could live on yeah. way less, or they could probably move in with someone for a period of time, or whatever it is. And that right. the the fear will actually just paralyze you from making the U turn that you know you need to make. And so, you know, there, there, there's different things that will paralyze us, and then there's other times when people will just make this crazy U turn and just blow everything up. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, what? Why? Why? You know, exactly. Um, and so, and, and that's where you know, uh, again, being being self reflective and mm -hmm. and like you say, you know, sharing the plans and mm -hmm. you know, uh, with, with my uh, during this phase, you know, whenever I would uh, mention that to my youngest daughter, you know, that we can truck school you instead of you know homeschool, you know, pull her out, we'll just <laughs> truck school. Uh, that didn't go like, over Yay. well. So. <laughs> it really. Ooh, Cool. Yay, we'll do fun. my lessons in the truck, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So truck school didn't go over too well, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but you know, in, in what you're saying, also, you know, one of the things I was thinking of, um, and not necessarily in my life, but in my experiences, when um, you know, I, I was doing my time working in the uh, uh, prison systems, and I know you go in and do ministry there. Um, I was working in, in a, a program within the prisons where we were trying to do a lot of rehabilitation with the inmates and we were giving them the work release where they could leave and, and go to work and they were getting other privileges the longer they were doing that they were receiving counseling and mm -hmm. everything that they needed to set themselves up so that when they walked out of jail uh, they didn't just walk out in the street and it was like well what do I do now. You know, so we made sure by the time they were leaving, you know, that they still had a job and, you know, money saved and where are you going to live and do we have to help you with an apartment? Everything was set for them. But one of the things that I, I was realizing, and I had to ask some of the inmates that they might have been in jail for multiple years. And there were a number of times when they would be looking at like a week left in their sentence. And that's it. They're done. Mm -hmm. And we set them up with everything. Life is good. And they would go and do something stupid. You know, they would like not go to work or yeah. come back late yep. or, you know, they knew they get the breathalyzer coming in and, you know, they would drink alcohol right before walking in. You know, and if you do that, the consequence for that is I have to move you to the maximum security facility. Right. where you're going to get more time and you're never getting this opportunity again. That was just the rules of division of correction. Like you just blew and it would baffle me. And while I'd be doing the paperwork, you know, start asking them like, why? I, I don't get it because they were always calm about it. You know, you go in and say, you know, I got to transfer you out of here. And all that. Yeah. Yeah. You got a job to do. Well, because it, it was intentional, be, right? It was intentional. Well, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, I've, I've, this year of their really life of leaving incarceration mm -hmm. to going into society, yeah. that that fear yeah. 
And that's where the paralyzing and whether we say it was the fight or flight and however you want to look at it in there, yeah. they would say to me, I don't know how to live out there anymore. Right. You know, I know right. how to live in here and I don't like it in here, but I know how to live in here. Right. So, yeah, they would intentionally do that out mm-hmm. of that fear of not making the U-turn, which is going to totally benefit their lives. Right. Yeah. And and everything's taken care of. You get your three meals and you get health care and your yeah. life is planned out for you and you kind of babysat and you don't get you don't get freedom. But um, you don't have to think about it either. And I, mm-hmm. I've heard plenty of cases like that, too, where they'll get in a fight because they know exactly what will happen. And um, yep. it's really sad because the whole rest of the time they are really wanting to get out and see their family again. Um, and then they freak out and get terrified. And especially guys have mm-hmm. been in there for, um, you know, decades. And then they don't know yeah. everything's changed. Like guys I, I work with um, are not familiar with the internet or with um smartphones or they don't know any of that Mm -hmm. they don't know what that is they don't know what any of that is and they'll tell them what it's like and they'll just they don't know what i'm talking about and they they get a little scared look in their eye like oh oh (laughs) when i go when i come out i don't they don't know what pay at the pump is you know so so it's like if they feel like they're going to go out and be completely lost and uh, it's like that that scene in Shawshank Redemption where that guy gets out as an old man and he can't do it and he just takes his own life because he, mm-hmm. it wasn't the world for him, you know? And it, it is really sad because you feel like you're, you feel like they got wrecked in there. You know? <laughs> they're not ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but the U-turns, you know, the, the fear, it, it is, it is going to be hard. Like it, you, U-turn, a U-turn is, the 180 it's the opposite it's something mm-hmm. totally different um and so i think i think that fear can can be really extremely paralyzing and and right. um you really do need support like that that's the thing that's why it's so i think so so important to have a couple of really good trusted friends or a coach mm-hmm. or a guide like a, a life coach or a pastor or a guide um, some right. kind of page wisdom going in because if you're totally on your own navigating it, uh, it's it's like you're flying blind, you know. And I, I just mm-hmm. I don't think it's supposed to work like that. <laughs> yeah. so. No, and 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 yeah, I mean, if you're making a major life U-turn, that that is what's going to happen because it is something that's totally different. I mean, that's the whole point of the U-turn. You're doing something totally different. Yeah. And I, I agree if you have some sort of coach or somebody to, you know, help you out through that, you know, you can get through those bumps. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things that I, I can see in hindsight uh, better is, you know, looking at, you know, the wonderful things that I learned through, you know, my transition and, you know, what I would not have learned otherwise, uh, you know, at the time you don't know that you're just struggling, but, you know, looking back, you, you can see that, you know, this actually was good, you know, and, and in that sense of, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I did it this way, you know, so, you know, I, I think it's important to, you know, just kind of take those risks and get out there and, you know, struggle through it because in, in those struggles, you're going to come up with, uh, you know, hopefully something uh, good for yourself and some learning tools and, you know, the change, you know, that you needed or were looking for. Mm. So, you know, definitely not to, uh, um, you know, just kind of like fizzle out mm-hmm. and uh, kind of like me sitting in that apartment looking around, you know, because there was that moment of me saying, okay, I did it. I'm done going back. Right, <laughs> you know? right. But but that was that fear response, you know, like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, there was a couple things. I had written a few things down that I wanted to make sure that I got to. Um, in February is often, now not everybody obviously who's tuning in is necessarily going to celebrate Lent or even know what it's about or anything like that. But Lent is really about returning and, and it tends to be reduced down to this thing of like, I'm not going to eat chocolate for 40 days or I'm going to not eat chocolate and then of course eat it again because I'll break, I'll break my thing. Um exactly. 
what I wanted to kind of talk about uh, in February, I'm going to be concentrating on this on my podcast of not thinking about Lent as anything like going without, but thinking about Lent as a returning or a homecoming or casting mm-hmm. off the false self or um, doing a 180 or an about face and different aspects of like, how can we think about things in an entirely new way or what are things we need right. to turn away from and things like that. And um, I don't know that I've ever approached Lent that way before. So for me, it's going to be like completely new ground, but I love kind of approaching things and fully mm-hmm. new ways and kind of what would that look like? You know, that, that, that sort of thing. And I guess if, if I was, if I was going to ask you um, in your life, what is something you think you would like to reimagine or rethink um, and challenge yourself in the next like month or two that like some growing edge for yourself, anything come to mind? Oh, way too much. (laughs) Uh, Pick just one. (laughs) If I have to narrow it on the spot. uh, I I think, you know, as much as I've talked about, you know, the importance of the self-reflection and, you know, the times that, you know, I've talked about doing it, that's still something that I need to do more of and, and to do it in the sense of not so much just for me, but that more self-reflective so that I can emote what is going on in me better. Mm. And I I think that's a piece that might be missing. You know, I I think part of the self-reflection is there and and I can probably do that fairly well. Uh, But the other piece would need, uh, you know, some attention and, you know, yeah, if, if, you know, given the 40 days to have an ability to focus on that, Mm. that might be the thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love the idea of, you know, doing something different in Lent than just giving up, uh-huh. you know, things. I, I've always, you know, encouraged people, you know, you can do things, yeah. <laughs> not just give yeah. up things. Right. It's, it's uh, like but... turns into this like deprivation month. You know, it's like, it's so negative. <laughs> I always think like, it's just like, <laughs> turns into this negative, oh no. And, and I right. know it's like, it doesn't have to be this like, horrible negative thing you know it could be I know like I guess Sundays are feast days I I never grew up with Lent so I've kind of no concept I I didn't know like one thing about the church calendar growing up whatsoever until I went to seminary that had a little more you know taught about the Christian calendar Mm -hmm. and liturgical stuff and to me it was really enriching and I started trying to pay a lot more attention to it but the idea about um about casting off a false self is it's just a really fascinating concept of like, what are extra things I can cast off that I don't need? And I think that's kind of more of the concept of give the giving stuff up. Right. Like, do I need a thousand extra calories of chocolate? Probably not. <laughs> you know, and that's more yeah. of like the giving up the stuff it is the casting off of, of the extra stuff. Do right. I actually need this? You know, could I give this up? And, and thinking of that's a much more positive twist, but, if I were thinking about uh, reimagining repentance or how I'd like to do something differently or 180 for myself for, for a 40 day period, or I'm thinking like mm-hmm. I'm thinking more like February and into March into Easter time, I'm personally thinking about how I want to see the best in situations and in people, which is, what I try to do anyway, mm-hmm. but it's not totally mm-hmm. natural for me because I think I was just born a half empty person. And I, I don't, <laughs> I think that just happens. I don't know. <laughs> I don't try to be like that, but I remember being nine or 10 years old and my dad looking at me and going, why are you so negative? <laughs> it's like <laughs> coming up with this. And, and I wrote, remember thinking, I don't know. I don't know why. And I remember writing a little <laughs> encouraging poster for myself. And it said, think yes, think positive. And I was, was not a graphic designer yet or anything, obviously. Um, but I was getting it. I was, a, that was one of my first posters. And I remember thinking, I don't want to be negative. I don't want to think a half mm-hmm. empty, you know? Um, but I think that's just kind of my natural tendency is to like, think of problems and think, how was, how do I solve them? And I wind up finding the worst thing first 
and so um and i can maybe turn it around later it's easier for me to find positive things maybe in other people before i find them in myself but seeing the seeing the the good thing in the situation or the good thing in the person first mm -hmm. and and just habitually doing that in a concentrated way for for the season of lent or maybe even just february through march <laughs> maybe longer than than lent in a concentrated <laughs> way is kind of going to be one of my one of my mm -hmm. opportunities I see for myself. And that's kind of what I'm going to try to, to put as my own little, my own little spin on it. And um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> that, but, that'll be uh, interesting to see, especially at the end uh, of doing that. If, if you notice any change in you, any, yeah. uh, you know, like unconscious uh, yeah. change of, of looking at that differently right right and it's part of like what you talk about mindfulness and awareness so often but it's true that as you put something in the forefront of your mind and you and you keep calling attention to it and you keep calling attention to it mm -hmm. it's true that your your awareness shifts and your pathways your mental pathways and consciousness does take a shift and it i've noticed that you know what you decide to focus on becomes kind of a new reality kind of a new way of seeing the world mm -hmm. and um and just as I've as I've been trying to pour more into people positively, I you know you you do see it come back. Like it's 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 pretty obvious whatever yeah. you put out there comes back, and it's not like a, <laughs> oh wow I can't believe it. It's kind of it's kind of like duh. Of course, of course, whatever you put out, it's going to come right. back. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's, you know, I think it's important to keep these challenges in front of ourselves if we have these little issues or growing edges that we'd mm. like to see be fruitful and Lent. And that's, that's why the church calendar and some of these different seasons are so wonderful because they create these, these slots and these opportunities to, yep. like, how about we work on this? How about we cast off this mm -hmm. whole self? How about we, you know, and, and it's like, and other people are doing it at the same time. So, you know, maybe someone's giving up chocolate. Maybe I'll do this, you know. So whatever it is, we can all kind of do something. Right. Together. And I think that's pretty positive. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And, and I like how you're saying that because I, I would encourage people that even if you're not, you know, religious or of a Christian faith and, mm -hmm. you know, you can still take that calendar. And, and if you were to follow it in that sense, it really does give those periods, you know, the Lent into the rejoicing of Easter and, you know, and then you have just the ordinariness of time and uh, kind of what you were saying earlier, you know, that, you know, how do we get in just when life is just life, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there, there is that period of, you know, the, the church calendar that's just called ordinary time. Mm -hmm. We don't have a special name for it. It's just called ordinary time. <laughs> but, you know, how do we yeah. celebrate that? That it's just, normal ordinary mm -hmm. you know but that moves us into you know advent which prepares you for the christmas and mm -hmm. you know there's all these things that you know you're right we can focus on uh, so yeah i i would definitely encourage people that you know whether it's of your faith or not that mm -hmm. you know if you take that calendar as an outline and you know take time you know a couple months couple weeks you know out of life to focus on something that you know we can improve on ourselves or get rid of in ourselves or help others yeah. whatever it may be mm -hmm. yeah i mean and with with easter coming at springtime everybody everybody connects with rebirth and spring and it's not like mm -hmm. christianity doesn't have the um the corner on the market of spring <laughs> in it. it's 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 yep. kind of you see that in a lot of different cultures and religions and mm -hmm. And just in people observing nature and everything too, and it's it's nice to be able to have kind of that common ground, and um, it's a rich it's rich in Christian tradition. But um, yeah, I think we'll have to maybe we'll cover that in some form in March when we do this. And just to announce this for anybody still, yeah. there's still people hanging on. There's still people listening. We'll do this again. Yeah, we still have a bunch. We'll do something on February 11th and February 25th. Mm -hmm. They're both Thursdays, and we'll do this at the same time, which would be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you come back, we would love to have you back again. And you don't have to be shy. You can actually pop in and share or ask your questions, too. 
Mm -hmm. Did you want to add anything else, Chris? I, I just uh, had the thought, as you were mentioning about the cup being half empty, I was at a conference and somebody put up a slide and said, the cup can never be half empty. Cup is always full. Oh, because there's something in the it? Explanation. Because you always have air filling in the void of wherever the fluid is not. It's always full. <laughs> full, of, full of something. <laughs> did, did we say what it was full of? We just said. <laughs> just has something in it. <laughs> so it has air in it. So it's always full. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Reflect on that drink. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a smaller so, glass. I, I'm always like, I think the glass has to be smaller, right? <laughs> then it's great. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything about size, so we're good. It's plenty of. It's plenty. It's plenty. It's enough. It's just a matter of go. how many fluid ounces you need. That's all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, this is really so. fun, Chris. I appreciate it, and and I think. I definitely heard you a lot better than I have in the past. So I think this Wonderful. is good. And, and when we get the, the replay, I'll, I'll listen and see if, and see how it is once we get that. Cause sometimes you never know exactly right. how it'll, how it'll turn out, but I um, appreciate your time and that we could chat like this. And it's always a blessing to me to meet with you. And as it is for me, I always look forward to this and uh, want to thank everybody who was uh listening in and you know if you liked what you heard come back on february 11th and you know share it with your friends all around social media and mm. that would be wonderful very good all right well have a good evening chris thanks you too <laughs> bye bye, bye. good night